Good morning, everyone, once again. <laughs> ah, I refreshed myself somewhat, a little bit. <laughs> anyway, um, I just got back from walking the little babies, and uh, they were doing their business, and also uh, in walking around, you know, when I walk them, I have a lot of time to think about different things. And one of the things, and excuse me, but my bed is higher now that I put that new, um, oh, ho, 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 let me get this up a little bit. See, hello, I can't hardly sit up straight. So anyway, I had to adjust it. I uh, I do a lot of thinking when I'm walking the dogs. Uh, and, you know, I was thinking about a lot of us nomads that are out there. We're senior citizens, okay? And really, we, we're on very limited income. A lot of us are making less than 800 a month. Yet we thrive. We thrive. It, it's hard. It is hard. Some have food stamps. I did, but I don't now. So I have to budget myself in a way where I have enough food for me and enough food for them. Those, they're my main concern. You know, it's easier for me to get food for me than it is for me to get it for them. So that's why I always make sure they have theirs first, and then I buy my food after. Uh, it, it, it's not, I'm not going hungry, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, no way am I going hungry. But I'm not getting the things that I really need to get you know, like a lot of fresh vegetables and things like that, I cannot get that. Now, I do have dehydrated vegetables, which I use periodically. I don't want to use every one of them because one day I might need them, you know, and I don't want to, uh, to waste what I've got. And it's not that it's wasted, but in a sense it is. Now, what I do a lot of times is when I cook for myself, I don't know how to cook for one person, okay? I really don't. So what I do is make enough, and then afterwards, oops, excuse me, you know, allergy morning. What I do is... Uh, give them what's left over, mix it with the rest of their food. They get more nutrition that way too. I don't like giving them dry food all the time. And I like to make their food whenever I can, which I do that, you know, quite often. Um, also, a lot of people don't realize what some of us senior citizens go through because, of course, many of you are young and you're not in the situation that many of us are. Senior citizens, many women, especially the women, we stayed home, we took care of the kids. Uh, our relationships didn't last that long. So, when the ex-spouse passes away, you don't get nothing because you haven't been married long enough. I learned that from one of my exes. We were married nine years and, what was it, they said, eight months, something like that, before he passed away. He never remarried. But we weren't married 10 years. 
And that's what's required in order for you to be able to get their Social Security or part of their Social Security, however it goes. So, you know, that was one down. And it really didn't matter that much because uh, at the time, I was doing very well. I mean, I, I was working and uh, I... <laughs> I didn't need anything. I just checked on it to see. Um, and then, of course, my husband and I, we were only married two and a half months, almost three months before he passed away. So no, nothing there either. He had to be alive for nine months. We had to be married nine months before he passed away. So that went down the drain. But it didn't matter either because I didn't marry him for the money because <laughs> there really wasn't any money. We were both very, I was living on my social and he was living on some kind of military assistant or something like that. I don't know exactly what it was. I never asked. I didn't care. So he thought I'd get this and I'd get that. But I kept telling him, you know, Wes, I don't want anything except I want you to live. That's all I want. That's all I want. Unfortunately, he didn't. Though I got him with me all the time. He travels with me everywhere I go. I've got his ashes. And I, I feel him next to me all the time. You know, I talk to him a lot, too. Okay, I know. A little crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but really, what a lot of people don't understand is nomads that are senior citizens, many of us do not have the resources. We don't have that much money. And we live basically, not day by day, but minute by minute, because it can be very difficult. Uh, Something comes up, and there goes the money that you had planned to use for this or that, and it's gone. Another thing that a lot of us have is, um, like my medical. I have Medicare and Medicaid in Louisiana, okay? Medicaid pays for me in Louisiana, not in Texas. Not in Alabama, not in Mississippi, not in Florida, only in Louisiana. So if I have to go to a doctor, most of the time, unless it is a kind of an emergency, I head over to Louisiana, go do what I got to do. Now, fortunately, to get my medicine, I uh, have the 90-day supply, and I have a year prescription for that, and... So I don't have to, uh, it, I assume Medicare pays for it because I've never had to pay more than, what was it, a dollar fifty or something like that for my, um, for my blood pressure medicine. But there's a lot of us that take a lot of different medicines and cannot afford it, cannot afford it. And you know, even if they're, they're, only having to pay a bare minimum on it, like I pay a dollar fifty for mine, and that's a ninety day supply. Wow, there's many of us that some of the medicine that they take oh, it's not paid for it because it comes out of their pocket. A lot of people say, "Well, you should have saved more money and all a lot of us couldn't save. we could not save money. There was no way. I had children. I could not put my money aside when it was my only income and, and my children's only income. So I couldn't put money aside. No. I waited till I was old enough. I applied for Social Security when I turned 62. It was okay because I was working and I was making good money. So it didn't bother me. I, I thought, you know, let me get it now. I wish I had waited, but then... You know, we don't look, <laughs> a lot of us don't look at the future. We look at the present. And 
that was my look at the present. And uh, so I do get the bare minimum. I am very lucky that I get, I think it's 770 now or something like that. I don't know. You know, we got a raise. Whoopee. <laughs> but, you know, please consider the senior citizens. I, I was listening to a, a video and somebody said something really nasty, uncalled for to that particular channel, that person. And guys, you don't know what your future is. You do not know what tomorrow is going to bring you. And just when you think, you know, just when you think you've saved, you're going to find out something's going to come up and take it all away. Have respect for the senior citizens because it is us that gave you life. It is us that took care of you. It is us that gave you wisdom. Some of you, not everybody. And it is us that loved you unconditionally. Some of you may disagree, and that's fine. You can do that. But consider the seniors, because you know what? We're a throwaway society. We really are. We are people that are forgotten or wished that we were forgotten. We don't know what our future is. We have no idea. And the way society is right now, I don't know. I don't know what the future brings. All I know is I got to live for today and try to save for tomorrow. <laughs> and that's the way many of us are. And that's also another reason why many of us are nomads, because we can't afford to live. And I know some people will say, oh, well, you know, there's these apartments that you can get. And they, yeah, they take most of your check. They leave you very little to exist on. Right. We could do that. No, I'd rather have my freedom. I'd rather have my money, what little there is. I'd rather have my pets. I'd rather have all that I have now, even if it's this moon glow here. I'd rather have that than be stuck in an apartment and all my money, what little there is being taken away. Love you all. Peace and hugs.